Hardly anyone can dispute that James Cameron's Avatar changed the 3D cinema experience forever when it was released over 11 years ago. Many thought the franchise was dead until recently, but behind the scenes, they've been busy all these years working on sequels. If all goes as planned, we will get the sequel to the officially most successful movie of the time next year in December. In order to make sure you don't lose track of things until then, we have compiled the most important information about Avatar 2, and today we would like to give you loads of reasons why we're looking forward to this mega blockbuster. However, before we get to part 2, let's rewind to the very beginning. After all, what was the first part of Avatar all about? This plot summary will inevitably contain some spoilers since we won't get into the storyline of Avatar 2 until afterwards. The plot basically revolves around Jake Sully, born in 2126, who joined the Marines at a young age and was so severely wounded that he became paralyzed from the waist down. Actually not a good starting condition to explore an alien planet, however, a tragic incident causes him to travel to Pandora instead of his twin brother. After cryo-sleeping aboard a spacecraft for several years, he finally arises on the beautiful and pristine planet with a few other humans and is briefed on the details of his mission, to mingle with the natives, the Navi, and discover their weaknesses. Behind the whole operation is the Resources Development Administration, or RDA for short. They in turn are pretty keen on the raw material on Obtanium, which is found in large quantities on Pandora. Since the human organism on the alien planet is anything but viable, the RDA has come up with something extraordinary. The talk is about a scientific project that has created a genetically modified hybrid of human DNA and Navi DNA. These so-called avatars can be controlled by humans using their human brain and any nerve endings connected to the avatar. For Jake in particular, this is truly an out-of-this-world experience because in this avatar body he doesn't feel the impact of his paraplegia and is thus capable of moving freely. Already during his first exploration mission, however, things go wrong and he gets separated from his group. Soon he faces a pack of Viper Wolves and defends himself in what should be a hopeless fight. To his luck, a native Navi woman comes to his aid and chases the dangerous animals away. Jake is immediately fascinated by the beautiful Navi who bears the name of Nitiri. He quickly learns about the customs and culture of the Navi people and finds himself in a fateful dilemma, as the more he learns about Nitiri and her way of life, the more irresolute he becomes about his mission. As a result, Jake must decide on whose side he's on, as either way, the fate of the usually peace-loving people rests with him. Now you should have somewhat brushed up on your knowledge regarding the first part. As we mentioned earlier, Avatar is set off a real 3D hype back then, which is why the film often has to put up with the accusation that moviegoers only went to the movies due to its 3D and not because of the plot. The fact, though, that star director James Cameron has a lot more up his sleeve becomes apparent when you realize that the 66-year-old has planned no less than four sequels for the franchise. Let's now turn your attention to the possible plot of Avatar 2. After the brilliant end of the first part, humans were successfully expelled from Pandora. Slowly but surely, peace returns to the almost colonized Navi and Jake has now fully become one of them. Nearly 13 years after the first part's end, he has even brought offspring into the world, namely his children Niteyam, Loak and Tuktiri. In addition to his role as a father, he now has a more laid-back routine and so he and his wife Niteri set off to explore all the splendor of the wonderful planet. In the process, they not only find themselves in the beautiful primeval forest of Pandora but also in the equally enchanting and dangerous underwater world in the oceans. As to be expected, the human occupants do not surrender easily and so they arm themselves for a renewed attack on the resources and the population of Pandora. Oh, by the way. Producer John Landau is sure that you will be able to watch Avatar 2 without any prior knowledge from the first Avatar movie, so it will not be essential to watch the whole movie again. Our summary of part 1 is therefore more than enough. What's interesting is that even before the first part came out, director Cameron announced that he wanted at least two sequels to follow. Success proved him right, with one of the most expensive productions in film history at the time. And after the blockbuster quickly rose to the top as the most successful movie of all time, it became obvious that sooner or later, a sequel was to follow. Planned were so-called back-to-back shoots in New Zealand. For the respective scripts of Avatar 2 to 4, Cameron hired different screenwriters and assigned each of them a film of their own. That's how Josh Friedman ended up writing Part 2, Rick Jeffa and Amanda Silva Part 3, and Shane Salerno Part 4. Only Part 5 is currently missing a screenwriter. James Cameron, who's certainly not a man of few words, also announced that he would like to use footage from the Mariana Trench, the deepest point on Earth, 
as a reference for the underwater world of Pandora. In terms of 3D technology, Cameron also announced nothing less than a revolution. One innovation is to shoot the sequences at 60 frames per second to achieve better and, above all, smoother 3D. Moreover, there are persistent rumors that Avatar 2 is going to be screened in 3D without the need for glasses, and that would be nothing less than a new 3D revolution. The problem with this is that it would require upgrading almost every movie theater in the world to the new technology by investing a large sum of money. A pretty unlikely scenario, especially in light of the pandemic and the lack of revenue. While Cameron is and remains one of the great visionaries in the movie business, we can only hope that Avatar 2 will not only feature great 3D technology, but also a captivating plot. For a couple of years already, various titles of the sequels have been circulating in the Avatar fan community, as it is considered highly unlikely that the movie will just be called Avatar 2. Back in 2018, the British news channel BBC brought up four possible titles which even today have neither been denied nor confirmed. So there are four titles for the four sequels, although it's not known which title is for which sequel. The first one mentioned is Avatar The Way of Water and could fit well to part 2 but also to part 3 due to the water theme. After all, both sequels are supposed to focus on the underwater world. Another possible title is Avatar, the Seed Bearer. This could be a reference to the Seeds of the Tree of Souls, as this is considered Pandora's holiest site and was heavily responsible for the complete transformation of Jake's soul to his Avatar body. The next title is Avatar, the Tolkien Rider. So far, nothing is known about the so-called Tolkien in the Avatar franchise, but the term Tolku can be found in Buddhism meaning something like a reincarnated person who passes on his knowledge to new generations. In connection with the word writer, it could of course also simply be a new living being on Pandora. The last title is called Avatar, the quest for Ewa. Ewa is the deity of the Navi who connects all beings across the planet and generally stands for the life energy of Pandora. Thus, one could possibly go on a quest for Ewa in the sequel because in the parts before, life is gonna extinct in an alarming way and the planet's decay is imminent. Another possibility could be that one must solve a certain task for Ewa. At this point, we can only speculate. What do you think? Are the titles credible and which title would you assign to which sequel? Feel free to discuss this in the comments section. Moving on to the cast of Avatar 2. Of course, several familiar faces will be making a comeback, including, of course, Sam Worthing as Jake and Zoe Zaldana as Neytiri. Likewise, joining the cast are Sigourney Weaver as Dr. Grace Augustine, Stephen Lang as Colonel Miles Quaritch, Matt Gerald as Corporal Lyle Wainfleet, and Giovanni Ripsey as Park Selfridge. For some of them, the question is certainly appropriate as to how exactly their presence is going to look like in part 2, because not all of them made it out of the big battle in the first part alive. Much more exciting are the new cast members though, because as you would expect from a big Hollywood blockbuster, they are quite impressive. So far, the cast includes Vin Diesel in an as yet unknown role, Titanic actress Kate Winslet as the Aquatic Ronal, and Michelle Yeoh as Dr. Karina Moog. Addie Falco has been signed up for the villainous role of General Admore, Cliff Curtis plays the leader of the Matkahina clan, Jermaine Clement becomes scientist Dr. Ian Garvin, and David Thewlis shows up as a new character named Palak. All in all, a respectable cast that'll possibly be expanded by a few more names. To the delight of many fans, producer John Landa regularly posts updates and behind-the-scenes footage on his Instagram account. There you can see all kinds of technically sophisticated shooting work which shows various underwater vehicles, some concept art and snapshots with actors in front of the camera. Discussing every single picture would surely go beyond the scope here, because meanwhile there are a vast number of shots that are all worth a look. In January, for example, we had the pleasure of seeing a beautiful Metkayina village on the water, although, unfortunately, it was concept art and not a scene from the film. Another example from last October shows a fully equipped high-tech RDA laboratory. A final example from August 2020 illustrates quite well the immense amount of work involved in shooting the Mammoth Project, as here you can see part of the film set in a large hall in New Zealand, all customized according to James Cameron's ideas, of course. All the more excited many fans are waiting for a trailer for Avatar 2. Unfortunately, there are no clues as to when a trailer or at least a teaser might appear, but given the theatrical release date of December 16th, 2022, we may expect some video material either at the end of this year or the beginning of next year. How did you like our new video? Write your expectations and theories for Avatar 2 in the comments and feel free to subscribe, because our next preview video is coming soon for sure.